All right, some time ago, a viewer sent me some step recovery diodes. I have finally gotten around to trying trying them out. Uh, these are Hewlett Packard uh, step recovery diodes back from the way back days. Gold leads and the whole the whole thing. Now they're marked um, HP 0457s, and they look like they're the fourth week of 1984 is when they were built. Uh, that cross references to a QSRD dash. 4652 and also the HP part number of 1901-0457. So um, having all of those part numbers didn't do me any good. I still couldn't find a darn data sheet for these things. So uh, I did find a um, application note though by Hewlett Packard uh, all about step, rec step recovery diodes application dot number 918 and it talks a lot about the theories. Um, the um, step recovery diodes are a PIN diode, so there's a, a P layer, an intrinsic layer, and then an N layer. The intrinsic layer is basically, a, you can kind of imagine that as a capacitor, so it kind of stores up charge. And then it kind of, it kind of as you go through the, 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 the turn on of the diode, it kind of waits for a while while it builds up this charge, then it dumps it really quick. Um, and uh, there is a lot of stuff here in this um, in this application now, but what I decided to do is to concentrate on one particular circuit, which I've seen before elsewhere, and it's basically this one. We can take a look at this one. I zoomed in all the way. There we go. So there's a a function generator that comes in. It's capacitively coupled in. And it goes into the diode, and the diode is is in sort of upside down, um, and then you apply some current, um, and you bias this bias this diode on a little bit so it's kind of ready to go, and then when it fires, it capacitively couples out into 50 ohms, and uh, there you go. So uh, I wanted to build something like this, and you're supposed to be able to get some some wacka wacka waveforms, and there's another way to do it with different diodes um, and way to do it with quadrature type stuff. But basically what will happen is you'll uh, you'll input a uh, you'll input a sine wave and then and then you get something out like this where it, it uh, fires and then it fires and it does that kind of thing. Uh, so let me show you what I built. It's a little bit hard to see here because it's all uh, it's all tiny and surface mount. So maybe the best thing to do is uh, is to draw my is to draw my circuit. So let me, let's get out a uh, pen here. All right. So this circuit is hard to see, but uh, there's. Uh, one, two, three, four, five surface mount parts, and then the uh, diode is over here. So basically what it is, it comes in, uh, it goes through a 51 ohm resistor, it cap capacitively couples in, uh, the diode, step recovery diode is here, it capacitively couples out into uh, 51 ohms, and then this is a uh, biased there's a, I have a 100 ohm resistor here and some negative voltage here to, uh, to bias the uh, thing on. And just because I had them, I thought I needed fairly small capacitors, so I put 27 picofarads uh, on each one. And they, that might be a really bad choice. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time reading the op note and try to figure out all the mathematics of this thing to make it perfect. I just wanted to see if I could get it to work or not. Um, so, yeah, there it is. So. This will be a generator. I'll put in a sine wave, and this will go to the scope. And hopefully we'll get whoop, we'll get little spikes of some kind out of it. So that's the uh, that's the plan. Um, yeah, uh, I tried to make it small and everything, and uh, I have the uh, scope probe in there, so it's uh, zero zero lay, uh, ground lead length that, that scope probe fits in here and touches ground on this and touches uh, the output on this. And so there's no uh, minimum ground length. I'll say that, a minimum ground length. Um, 
and then this is where the bias comes in. All right, let's go take a look, see if it works. All right, so I've got some waveforms going in. I've got a uh, 25 megahertz uh, clock sine wave going in, and uh, then I'm measuring the output of my circuit. And you can see over here that we're getting uh, getting some sharp rise times. Uh, you can see the input is the uh, is the cyan trace, the blue trace, and the output is the yellow trace. So, yeah, where it kind of goes through the zero crossing area, though, where the diode starts to conduct, uh, you get this really quick peak. And uh, yeah, looks uh, looks pretty good. We can zoom in a bit. Uh, there's five nanoseconds, two nanoseconds per division. So yeah, it's a pretty fast edge. A little bit of jitter on it. I'll put some uh, high resolution photos up here in the uh, corner, so you can take a look at uh, take a look at these. So, yeah, I don't know if uh, I'm driving it exactly correct or not. Um, one thing that's interesting, if you change the biasing on that uh, the uh, current through the through the uh, diode, you do get some uh, changes in the uh, changes in the waveform, and I'm operating at a much lower current than I expected to. Um, so I don't know exactly if I have the right circuit or, but anyway, it's doing something. So it's kind of fun. First time I've ever used, um, the, uh, these type of diodes before, the step recovery diodes. So yeah, they're interesting. The might be fun to find a better schematic and uh, duplicate that, maybe make a comb generator or something, but, uh, there you go.